Today we are going to have a look at all the available classes for Ashes of Creation Alpha 2 and I'm super excited like I want to know what those classes can do and I've heard there are like a couple of new classes as well right so let's have a look classes classes are the combination of a primary and secondary archetype wait what's a secondary archetype so, so you can have like secondary job oh that is actually interesting we have a specific terminology when referring to archetypes and classes. Classes are the combination of your secondary archetype with your primary. So you could basically be like a melee like archer or something like that, right? So you're like maybe your main focus is like melee, but you also have a bow and you can be also a ranger or something. But in melee you're maybe more efficient. That's that's what I'm getting here, right? A player uh, chooses their primary archetype at the start of the game. A player cannot change their primary archetype. Players receive skill points as they level. These can be used to level up skills within their skill tree. Oh, I love skill trees. Like, I love this a lot in MMOs. I think it's really good because you can have like unique builds with that as well, right? It will not be possible to max all the skills in a skill tree. Of course not, that would be broken. A player may choose a secondary archetype when they reach level 25. The combination of primary and secondary archetypes is referred to as a class. The secondary archetype does not provide additional skills. Secondary archetypes may be changed but not on the fly. But you, you can respect the points, right? Like let's say I go down a certain route on my skill tree, I can just change that again, right? Uh, each skill in the primary tree will have several augment options uh, from the secondary tree. This is an example of horizontal progression. Okay, that is interesting that they are going this direction. Augments to primary skills can fundamentally change the way the ability works. Oh, okay. Adapting what the ability wants did to incorporate the identity of the secondary archetype class. If a, fight, if a fighter were to choose mage as a secondary archetype, and yeah, you guys see here I'm correct, so you can be a, let's say, fighter, archer, or you can be like a, even like a hybrid, like a, you would be like a spell sword here, right? Wow, I love spell swords. I think they are so fun. That's what I like so much about, for example, Death Knight in World of Warcraft, because it does feel a bit like a spell sword uh, class, right? This combination opens up augments that can be applied to skills in their primary skill tree. Fighters have... What? They have a skill that allows them to rush towards a target and upon reaching the target deal an amount of damage with a chance to knock the target down. That's cool, so, so you can have like a secondary effect, like you deal damage but you also stun, okay. A blink augment could be applied to the uh -huh, skill which uh, would now teleport the player to the target, thus eliminating the charge time of the skill. Have that too. Class progressions does not relate to a player's artisan progression. World events do not directly impact class effectiveness, but there may be ancillary effects in the availability of equipment, enchantments or tattoos. Wait, they do something too? Oh, wow. So so those those are the, the combinations we have here. I, I think that is actually super fascinating, guys. Like, so if you are a bard with a bard, you are a, wait, you're a minstrel. And if you choose to be a cleric with a bard together, like your primary is a bard, and then cleric, you are a soul weaver. <laughs> If you are a bot with a fighter, I like actually the name Tellsword. Okay, and bot and mage magician. Wait, that sounds too much like mage to me. And if a cleric is with a fighter, it's a Templar. I mean, that makes sense, right? You're basically like a paladin or something. You have a lot of interesting combinations here and stuff. No, like seriously. What else do we have here? Wow. So rogue tank is a night shield. Wait, a summoner and a ranger is a beast master. That's like a like beast mastery hunter in World of Warcraft. You're probably like fighting alongside your freaking pets and stuff. That is actually cool. I, well, should I be like a, a vec uh, beast master? I have to know first of all what vec gets like racials and stuff. Because I would probably play a vec, but I also consider a dwarf or maybe a dwarf beast master. <laughs> Interesting. 
Balancing. The 64 classes are par what? partitioned into the 8 primary archetypes. Balancing of active skills only relative to those 8 primary archetypes. There are 4 primary uh, groups of augments assigned to each base archetype. Balancing of augments uh, relates to the 4 augment groups for each of the 8 archetypes. Wow. Even though augments do radically change the way active skills provide your abilities, there is still a primary focus on the base archetype itself and not the 64 whole classes. We are not really talking about 64 true classes, we are talking about uh, 8 classes with 64 variants. Those are a lot of variants. Like what I really like so far about like the way they made the classes in Ashes of Creation, it seems like you as a player, you have a lot of freedom and it feels like your choices are very impacting also your, your playstyle and stuff. Like I said earlier, summoner with freaking ranger, you're a be beast hunter or something like that basically. That is actually so cool, like a beast mastery hunter, holy shit. Balancing Ash of Creation is group focused, not based on 1v1 combat. I think that's uh, uh, often the case in MMOs. I, I see this a lot now, like I have a good example in, in PvP. Right now, um, in World of Warcraft, for example, Shadow Priest is not really that wow in 1v1. But I feel like if they are in a group, they are really, really good. Same with like Balance Druid. There are certain classes that are just better with others around. Because they are often like heavily like... Like some classes are very like dot based. Some have like some... So maybe utilities, right? So if let's say in Ashes of Creation, they have like one class that has tons of utility and group support. Of course, you can balance it around 1v1 comp because if you give this this support kind of class so much DPS and they have support skills, then what's the point of even playing a, a regular DPS? If you can be a DPS that is on nearly the same level as a regular DPS, but you have support skills. So 1v1 matchups will have rock, paper, scissor dynamic. I love this. I actually love this when classes have niches. Because it gives more class identity, in my opinion. If you have one class that can do every freaking thing, it sucks. <coughs> I have one MMO, uh, one good example, and that's Elder Scrolls Online. In ESO, um, over the, the expansions and patches, they actually try to have every single freaking class do the uh, same roles and stuff. Like, I was playing a Magicka Nightblade for quite a long time as well and a magicka nightblade used to be a purely dps focused um class spec you could say in elder scrolls online and at some point they gave it uh, tanking skills and then in another expansion they gave it uh, healing abilities and suddenly it was like a jack of all trades but not good at anything and and then they tried to rebalance it by giving the other classes that as well and then we had like all those classes in Elder Scrolls Online being so versatile you could do whatever you want that they weren't like really that much unique anymore because before you had to pick you want to play this class and you're super high dps but very glass can like like i said magicka nightblade for example or do you want to be something like maybe like let's say a warden and you're freaking tanky and you have decent dps but not as high as some others but yeah they they completely try to give every class every role and i don't think that's good and i love that they have here this rock paper scissors dynamic i think that makes it more unique if you play a certain class and more fun in my opinion there will be matchups in one vs where one class will be superior to another and that application should be a rock paper scissors dynamic you want there to be counterplay between the different classes okay so if you have let's say another one v one but group versus group you want to actually have like some matchup or like your group you want to have like this class it helps the other one so let's say you have a glass cannon class that you want to get with you one that makes you tanky or gives you so much additional healing that you stay alive while you deal tons of dps i think that's interesting or you have like something that's let's say dot dot based right and you you need to, if you have like a dot class you want to have a longer fight for your dots to take full effect and wear the enemy down so you're getting like some sort of crowd control class that that is with you so you can constantly like slow or stun your targets right while the dots of of the dot dps class are taking effect on the target on the target it's going to be very dependent skill and strategy i like that that's like with chess right like if, if you play chess you also have certain moves you can do with certain pawns right 
So you do this with that, and you have like the horse, you have the tower, and they can move certain ways and stuff. Yo, that is like chess here. <laughs> we have chess in an MMO. Like, let's do this. Uh, this one can do this move. This one can do this. This one be beats this and that. I like that. Certain secondary ar uh, archetypes are capable of bridging the gap between their counterpart. Okay, so like, like I said earlier, like, you want to have a certain, let's say, group combination. Certain archetypes are capable of moving the gap between their counterpart, Percy. If I'm a tank archetype and a mage is my counter, I can take a mage secondary and kind of bridge the divide slightly and then move my identity to that direction ever so slightly. Ah, yeah, if you're like, let's say your uh, primary is like, let's say a uh, ranger or something, you're like, like range. And then you can still pick like a secondary melee job. So if you ever are in a situation where you're in melee, that you have some sort of defense, right? Like something you can do to get out of the situation, right? Like maybe you weaken your target from range and when a target gets close to you, you just burst it down with like melee attacks or something, basically, right? That's good. Meta. <laughs> That's what we all want to know. What's going to be the meta? What should we play, right? <laughs> the effectiveness of classes, skills, and gear is going to be dependent on the adversary or the encounter. There will be optimal builds for different challenges and difficulty ratings. The design aims to avoid any obvious meta or cookie cutter builds in Ashes of Creation. <gasps> oh, yes, I like that. But I don't think they can completely pull this off because. It has always been in every single MMO like that, that there is always a meta. Like you can try as much as you like to make every class unique or good at something. But what is if the uh, most difficult dungeon, for example, is one where you want to have something that's very mobile to dodge mechanics, but uh, can do tons of DPS on the go and not something that has like, let's say, a long cast time and is very slow. Or was if you need uh, more group uh, utility from classes in certain rates, right? Then you want to pick those that are not selfish but have like more group utility. So there will always be some sort of meta based on endgame content. I don't think there can be complete balance in an MMO, unfortunately. Like it's a wish and dream we all have, but it doesn't exist in any MMO I know. You have a meta in freaking uh world of warcraft elder scrolls online you have this even in black desert online and stuff that there's always be some always some kind of meta like new world is also a good example right there are like certain things that are just freaking broken like there was a time where like the 2h hammer was just so much more op than for example a spear or something right so like i said there's always some type of meta in an mmo Oftentimes you just have a very vertical power scale and that determines uh, chase when you have a variety of rele relevance across certain types of adversaries and the variety changes over time because of player activity. And then that affects the economy and crafter system and who was uh, producing what f for what demand. Okay, It presents a more dynamic situation rather than a quote unquote cookie cutter type selection. All right. Let's have a look at the skills and uh, here are the primary skills is those are like the class abilities they are based on a player's archetype and you can do a, a augmentation from a secondary archetype basically you can change your skills around a bit okay this is the alpha one preview of the the skills here and of course tank, you have ultimate defense, that's very important, so you are actually tanky. You have lacerate steps, your target dealing instant damage and causing them to bleed. Nice. Weapon toss, basically you, you throw your weapon at the target, dealing instant damage and uh, bouncing to nearby enemies. So this has AOE effect. I'm pretty sure this maybe has also aggro, right? So as a tank you can aggro like in AOE fashion. Shockwave slams the ground in front of you, dealing damage to all targets and slowing their movement speed. What did I say earlier in PvP, for example? If you have something that has like tons of dots, and dots take time to wear an enemy down, it's not like an immediate burst, then it's good to have this around that can slow targets. So you can hop around the arena or like the battleground and they are slowly dying in front of your eyes. <laughs> Onslaught charges at your target and provides a small damage absorption. Or that you have to keep up. Javelin pulls uh, your target to your location. Oh wow. 
resounding smash strikes in front of you dealing damage to all targets a second hit resounds to the selected or closest target wow that's actually really nice and and what is that here uh, myrmidon's fury strikes your target dealing direct damage uh, grants a chance to counter attack when struck and bulwark uh, bashes all targets in front of you dealing direct damage increases your block chance that's nice actually higher block chance cleric that's your healer basically in ashes of creation castigation lessens your target with the holy energy whip dealing direct damage restores health Add mana to nearby and allies. Wow. That's cool. So as a cleric, while you deal DPS, you also heal at the same time. I think that is uh, a good design for healers. I love this kind of healers. That is more fun to play uh, to me. If you can deal DPS and your DPS skills, they don't do as much damage than on a regular DPS, maybe just half the damage, but they also provide like healing to the group because that makes the rotation more fun. Because I hate on a healer to just stand around and constantly click on my allies and heal, heal, heal and not DPS much. So if, if it plays more aggressive and while playing aggressive it provides healing, that is, that is fun. Hallowed Ground fills the target area with radiant energy, damaging enemies and healing allies over time. Nice. Radiant Burst heals allies in the area around you with a wave of divine power. Judgment. That looks like a paladin skill here. Holy Power crushes your target, dealing direct damage and lowering their uh, damage mitigation. Divine Sensor hurls a radiant spear at your target, dealing direct damage for a short duration. Anytime the target is attacked, the attacker has a chance to be healed. Oh, that is an interesting skill. What's this? Divine Light heals your target with a flash of light, reduces the cooldown of devotion and radiant burst. Wow. That's cool. What's this? Alpha preview primary skill. It's from the eight archers, whatever you choose. But wait, that's from Alpha 1. Like, stuff has probably changed already, right? Maybe. Regeneration. Oh no, devotion. Uh, lops a ball of holy energy at your friendly target, providing a large heal. So that's your burst here, basically. Regeneration. Uh, bathe your target in restorative energy that heals them over time, stacks up to three times even. Interesting. And yeah, resurrection, we know what that does. It resurrects the target. Now on the mage we have fireball. Throws a fireball at your target, dealing direct damage. Then we have lava storm. Sounds really nice. It uh, creates a field of lava at the targeted area, deals area damage over time. That's cool, so it's like something that stays on the ground, I imagine, right? And then it, of course, deals damage over time. In PvP, you don't want to stand in that, you always want to walk out. Prismatic Beam summons a giant prismatic beam of energy, deals extremely large damage and snares all targets caught inside. Yo, that's a cool skill. Black Hole summons a black hole at the target location that slowly pulls in enemy targets. That's a scary skill. Increases in pull strength the closer your target is to the center. That's your crowd control here on the mage. Gift of the Ma Magi, or Magi, sorry. Gift, Gift of the Magi. Restores mana over time to you or your friendly target. Nice. Maybe we have some support on the mage. I like that. Drain Essence. Drains the life force of your target, dealing damage over time and restoring your mana. Yeah, you want to keep this up at all time. So you can have infinite sustain. Thundershock shoots forward a beam of lightning from your hand, deals instant damage and knocks down enemy targets. Um, then we have Blink. Blinks forward in the direction you are traveling. Meteor Storm. Summons forth a Meteor Storm, dropping three meteors in the target location. Each meteor does larger area damage upon impact. Hmm. I like that. What does the secondary archetype do? Offers four different schools of augmentation. Each augment school affects a primary archetype skill in different ways. For example, a mage offers teleportation and elemental schools of augments. These augments will affect a fighter's primary skills differently than a cleric's. Yeah, to make to make it unique, right? 
Each augmentation has a level requirement and number of skill points required to activate. So, so you have to be really careful. Like, maybe you can use this as an example with the mage. So you have like teleportation and elemental schools of augment. So you have to maybe focus on like an elemental school, right? And if you have like certain points spent in that, you unlock something. So you have to pick, let's say you want to go for fire or ice. Wait, what elements do we have? We have air, fire, water, and lightning. Wait, we don't have ice? That doesn't matter though. It's still cool. But why why is there no ice? I, I'm I'm like surprised. Instead of ice, they have air though. It's four elements. Hmm. Maybe other classes have ice skills. Because I've usually not seen any MMOs yet where there's nothing with ice. Like usually there's always ice magic. Choosing the same primary and secondary archetypes increases focus on that archetype. Yeah, like, yeah, I've never seen a mage without ice. Augments to primary skills will fundamentally change the way the ability works, adapting what they mm -hmm, once did to incorporate the identity of the secondary archetype. The progression system for augments is very similar to the class progression system. Yeah, that's basically you level up. Once you hit level, let's say, 35, you get this skill. Once you hit level 40, you get like another skill. With 45, for example, you get your OP skill. And if it's 50, it gets a rank 2 or something. Yeah, that, that's how they want this to work. So you have like a class system within a class system or something. If you had to describe it, right? Changing... Oh, this is the important part. That's what I asked earlier, right? Like if you can actually change it or if this is like permanently. Changing the augmentations on your skill will require to go to an NPC in a village node or higher. So yeah, here you can most likely reset this as well, right? So let's say you are mage and you focus on air. But then you want to go for lightning. So you can actually remove your air talents or, or skill points and put them into, let's say, lightning. That's good. Some spell colors and general FX changed based on augments. I mean, of course, like the visuals are insane. Like we, we saw the freaking uh, seasons reveal of Ashes of Creation and it looked so beautiful. Like I can't wait for the game to release. Outside of class specific skills, there may be a subset of universal skills such as active block and dodge. Hmm. Skill points. Ah, players receive skill points as they level. These can be used to level up skills, increase their rank within their active, passive or combat weapon skill trees. It will not be possible to max all skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is why I said you have to focus on something like lightning or, or wind. And here are the skills. So those are the passive ones. Maybe that's you receive more healing or you're, you're here. That looks like... You can maybe move faster or something. And here, like I said, you have fire, you have lightning. So you, you pick something you want to specialize in. You want to be like an OP pyromancer, go for fire. You want to be the one that is like freaking Palpatine from Star Wars. And you just want to shock everyone from the tip of your fingers or something like here. And you just max this. <laughs> and a weapon. Ah, you have a weapon skill tree. Wait, that means I have to focus on a weapon probably, right? Like, correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong, or maybe we read this later. But I believe if you go for, let's say, two-handed swords, like great swords, you have uh, different talents for great swords than for battle axes or something, right? Or for like, yeah, for like hammers or something. So yeah, you have probably like sword, axe, mace, uh, our own uh, kind of weapon skill tree. That's fascinating, I like that. And here players are able to reset and reallocate their skill points. But I'm pretty sure you have to pay for that. This is from 29th of July 2020. Okay. Making active skills capable of receiving additional skill points, allocations and unlocking additional features so that from a player agency standpoint it's going to be up to you whether or not you want to be more diverse but less depth wider and not taller in some of these skills choices um 
Guys, I will make a suggestion for you. If, if you're leveling up a character, try to specialize in something. In my experience, a jack of all trades is good at nothing. Like, it's, it's, it's cool if you are very versatile. Maybe it's fun to play, but you're not going to be efficient at it. Like, you better have, like, an OP range uh, spec, and then you have someone that's, like, super OP in melee or something, and then if you make groups, you bring those people into, let's say, the dungeon raid. Same with PvP. Don't do everything, like, half-heartedly, and you have, like, little damage from everything, and... Because you have a cast time, you have resources, like, it is pointless to make everything hit weaker, but you have more skills to use. Like, it's better to have three, four buttons you hit and they hit hard than to have uh, seven, eight buttons you hit and they don't even do as much damage. Universal skills. Outside of class-specific skills, there may be a subset of universal skills, such as active, block, and dodge. Hey, well, how does that work, though? Universal skill progression may align with the player's passive skill tree. Is that what we saw earlier? Let, let's scroll up. Yeah, yeah, here with the speed, right? Okay, so, so if you have like more speed, then it's maybe higher dodge chance or whatever. Outside of your class specific skill tree, there's going to be a subsection of a few skills that are universal, active block, like dodge. And I think we're going to do, or at least we are going to be discussing here uh, the... Universal skills will have progression that might align with your passive tree. Yeah. Or how far you let, let, let's say, like, how, let's say if you're dodging, maybe there's like a cooldown or something, and maybe the, the skill tree lowers, like, reduces the cooldown or something. Could also be, right? So if you, like, want to have, like, more dodges and, like, less cooldown and be able to have this faster. Then you can uh, go for that. Siege abilities. What, what is this siege abilities? Up to eight players of the same primary archetype can brand together to create monumental effects during a siege. The classes will need to be in the same group or raid. I mean, yeah. So you can just randomly walk uh, into other players and do this. Like you have to be in an official group or raid. These are the types of systems they want to put in place where groups of a single primary archetype can become, come together to summon these types of effects that uh, play off what the identity of an arc uh, type is. What's this? War Beast. That looks nice. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's the one uh, you can never change. So if you make a character, your archetype that you pick, let's say you are a fighter, you always be one but you can go into like let's say being a spell sword or whatever so you can just pick this and then you you but wait how how is it with like secondary archetypes like how do you change them it's also at the npc right when it comes to the primary archetype this is a decision you want to make and you want to make sure it's the right decision because it's permanent that's why it's useful to watch videos like on my channel, for example, or like from other creators to Ashes of Creation, to figure out what looks cool for you, what you think is gonna be fun. And it's this is the, one of the reasons why we are making this video, so we can break down in detail every single class and what they do and look at their skills because MMOs are grindy and I think it's important to make the right choice because what is if you grind a character for months and you max out? And then, oh, I actually would have preferred to play a mage. Why did I play as a freaking fighter? So, watch stuff first. Look at it. Does it look pretty? Do you like the class fantasy? How do you find the rotation? Do the skills appeal to you? If they do, pick it. I think they're all probably pretty fun, but there might be some that you enjoy a bit more. You're going to create this identity that you can't just change on the fly. It's going to be something that you will know a person and you will know their base, what their base archetype is. And they're not just going to change from battle to battle. So that gives some consistency in the engagement, understanding reputation on the server. Yeah, and then you have like a elite, let's say, mage, for example. And it's like your friend, he has been always playing a mage. Then you have someone that has been playing a cleric all the time. It also gives like an identity to the player if you're in like a guild and you know, oh, that's the, that's the cleric dude, that's the mage dude. Yeah. 
But that's just just like with most of the MMOs. The only exception is like Final Fantasy XIV, because there you just make a, a race, like you pick a character, and after you have uh, made this character, you can always change your class. But what do I actually prefer? That you can always change your base class, or do I prefer to have a fixed uh, primary archetype? Hmm, I think they both have advantages and disadvantages. Like the advantages are if there's like a patch that freaking nerfs your primary archetype for some reason. And this is like very good in Final Fantasy XIV. Then you can actually uh, change your class to something that's more meta. So if you're someone that wants always to beat the most difficult content in a game. Then I think it's actually nice if you can change your primary archetype. But from a fantasy and a, like an RP perspective and this is like the disadvantage and also by uh, making important choices um, if you can change like I'll okay, give you guys an example you make let's say a uh, VEC mage for example and then your VEC mage is maxed out and everyone in your guild knows you for that or you maybe had like class based uh, quests and your outfit and everything about your character was designed around being a mage plus your reputation and then you change to let's say a fighter then you lose all your identity and even like the progress also with gearing and everything is like in vain unless you collected uh, way earlier already like good gear or something and stored it in some chest and i'm not sure how it works here with like looks if you have do you have actually transmogs here because in WoW, for example, if you have like a death knight and you have the coolest transmogs, if you could be able to change your primary cl uh, class just by talking to an NPC, you would not only have no gear, but you would have also no looks and everything. So yeah, I don't know. For me personally, I don't mind if you can change the class. I mean, it, it, it doesn't affect gameplay really, right? So yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't care if, if you can change or not. For me personally, I will just look at everything like we are doing here, pick something I enjoy and just stick to it. Because I want to have the best in slot gear. And I'm pretty sure you, you will have a hard time getting the best in slot gear on, on like another, let's say, fighter or something class, right? Because if you're in a group, they're not gonna share fighter gear with you. Like, they need it themselves, right? So, yeah. Secondary uh, archetype of a class may be changed, but not. Um, but what does this mean, not on the fly? So, this is because you have to walk to an NPC. Oh, yeah, village, you know. So, I have to travel a bit. Ah, this is what they mean, not on the fly. They don't just mean a freaking NPC. This may be done through a quest system. And there's a cooldown, so that means maybe just once a month or once a week you can change or so. Or every server reset or whatever. Okay. So it's also important, but you can actually get out of it if you don't like it. Secondary class choice, which comes after some time getting used to the world of, uh -huh, of Vera, will be more fluid. If you choose uh, the fight and the rogue to make a shadow blade. Ooh, that, is, that has a lot of uh, class fantasy here. I like that too. Shadow blade, night blade, that's so cool. But eventually you want to try your hand at summoning to make a blade caller. What is a freaking blade caller? Oh, sort. I freaking summon you uh, into my hand so I can fight with you. Is, is that what a blade caller is? Like you summon weapons and you have like those glowing magical weapons? Maybe that's cool actually. <laughs> but it sounds funny. Blade caller. Like, blade, I call you. <laughs> you will be able to do so. We don't want you to be able to change your secondary class or augments you have applied out in the open. We want to make you conscious on the choices somewhere in an NPC. Yeah. Can you actually try those, like test those out before you pick them? Like, what I would like to see, but I'm not sure if they can do it, maybe it takes out of time. I want them to add those trials for, for the secondary uh, archetypes. Because it would be nice if you could uh, check out uh, what does a, let's say, blade caller do, what does a shadow blade do. So you can, be, let's say you are a fighter and you want to pick your secondary one, that you can at least test them out. Or maybe they have like unique quests. But there are so many, I feel like it's going to be hard to make a, a quest unique for each, right? 
Plus, if there are any guilds or, or groups with that, I think they're just way too many. We have like 64 variations, right? Class-specific quests. Oh, they have those, but those are just for the primary, or? It's going to be a lot of shared quests, but there's also doing class-specific quests. Mm -hmm. That some classes are better at others than doing certain things, and that play itself through the general community quest. That's fine, but there are certain periods from a designer's perspective where you want to make the encounter to be the antithesis of what a player is good at. It also gives them perspective because we have more fluid class combination systems. Okay. Wait, what is this? Racial benefit. Each race has different base stats. Yeah, that's why I have to look for if I if I even play a vec. Maybe if I go for let's say a ranger or a warrior, maybe I pick a dwarf over it. Races are not gender or class locked. Some classes may work better with certain races, but nothing is enforced. Yeah, that's like in your traditional MMO, you always have this where a race has certain stuff that's just better. Like World of Warcraft Orc is really good for Hunter because there's a passive that makes your pets uh, do more damage. Um, yeah, gnomes have always been quite OP when it comes to magic and stuff. So, yeah. Stat growth proceeds in the following order. The race seeds are player based stats. The primary archetype grows the base stats. The secondary archetype does not contribute to stat growth. Okay, interesting. I didn't know that. Wait, gear has a pro that's interesting. Gear has approximately a 40 to 50 person influence on a player overall power in the game. That's so little. Gear's only 40 or 50 percent of the power. So the rest is just level and, and, and talent, right? Like talent points. That's actually quite little in comparison to other MMOs. Like in other MMOs, it's more like a hundred percent or something. Like if you have good gear, you are twice as strong, if not more than that even. And then comes the, the normal base stats you get from like level ups, right? And from like your skills and talents. Ash of Creation has a traditional trinity of tank, DPS and, and support. Wait, but what are the non-healer roles? So you have supports that are not healers. Okay, that's n that's sort of new to me because I only know about like all support roles like are usually healer roles and the healers have more like support skills. But you have actually classes that don't have heals but they have purely support skills that like maybe buff the damage of groups. That is interesting. Let's see how this will play out. Because you have to be then careful when you make groups. Not that you mistake a certain class for a healer but it's actually just a pure support without healing skills <gasps> ah oops i misclicked here players can also double down their archetype choice uh, do choice to strengthen their primary role so yeah that's what we saw earlier right weapons and armor so you have ranged weapons shields and two-handed weapons yeah like your traditional mmo PVX game will encounter... Wait. Wait, 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 wait. PVX, Ash of Creation is a PVX game. Oh, yeah, yeah. PVX means PVP, PVE. I was like, PVX means like big PVP. No, it's just both. It's unlikely that player could purely focus on just PV or just uh, PVE. Ah. So they make it to where you can purely PvP and you can purely PvE. So they want the player to engage in both and that's why there's a balance, alright. There won't be separate PvE and PvP servers, but some servers may be more PvP focused than others. Wow. So it's purely PvP servers, guys. For those of you that don't want to PvP, oh. You're gonna have a hard time. Maybe you have to hide behind trees and stuff. Maybe you won't be seen. <laughs> there will not be different PvP and PvE and gear types. Progression in game might require PvE elements. Yeah, that that's all often like that. I think it's like always like that. Even in WoW, like you need freaking legendaries, and you only get legendaries by doing freaking Thorgas, right? Okay, I, I think 
we're pretty much finished. But here are some of the skills shown, right? Let's have a quick look at those as well. So there's like this AoE skill. Yeah, I think we saw this one already once. Like uh, the clip to that. That looked actually pretty cool. Do you have more uh, stuff that's shown? Oh yeah, in six years we will press the Ash of Creation. Yeah, that's the, the one we saw earlier. And what do we have here? We have the Guardian. That's your tank warrior, right? And we have the Weapon Master. Yeah, that's like like Arms Warrior and WoW or something, right? You have DPS class, you have the Arc Wizard, and you have the Hog Eye. So that's like your Ranger here. You have High Priest and you have... What's this? Okay, with Crossbow and Mace. That's nice, so... But what does an engineer do? Okay, so, so we have like a lot of options. But that's actually interesting. I actually like the way they designed everything here with the classes. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I think they, they're going a right direction here also with like the secondary archetype. I like how you can have like so many unique kind of builds, right? We have 64 variations I read earlier. That is insane. Like you can mix up your main your main class with every secondary class. And you can go even a bit of range as a as a pure melee and you can even be like a, a spell sword and stuff. I think this is so cool. Like I'm really looking forward to better. I wonder what they're going to add there. Maybe they're even going to add some more classes and stuff. Like it's going to be really really insane. Like so far Ashes of Creation is looking really great. I can't wait to play that. I'm excited. So what do you guys think about the classes? It's interesting, right? So much customization and so much uh, class fantasy. You can play anything in this game almost. You have engineer and stuff. <laughs> it's so cool, right? And yeah, if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. And if you did find this video informative and interesting, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time.